Hello, and as you can tell, we are here, back with another ship. And this time, the contract we're doing is to test the liquid fuel terrier engine while orbiting at 40, 410,000 to 420,000 meters. Now, how we're going to do this? Now, we're going to use the orbit script I've already written. So I want it to, to do is copy path zero launch and orbit comma that and then that period goody. And now, let's see if the disk space changed. No. List files. Switch to zero. List files. Huh. Why is it blank? There's stuff in there. Switch to one. List files. Edit. Launch and orbit. Okay, so it should be throwing errors, but it isn't. Something is not right. Okay, let's toggle the power. List files. Okay, so now it is working. <sighs> Copy, hat, switch to zero. List files. Okay. Switch to one. List files. Nothing. Good. Copy, path, zero, zero, launch. And orbit, comma, list files, now it's there. Don't know what happened earlier. Does that reflect on this? No. Okay. Free space remaining, 7,974. Edit, launch, and launch, and orbit. Naming convention. Always remember to keep it. So what we do is we change this to 410,000 instead of 100,000. We save locally. Bada boom. <laughs> List files. Didn't actually change the size of the file. I'm going to test to make sure I didn't screw up my script. Edit with notepad off screen, and it still loads without any changes to it. Good, 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 good. Good, okay. So, run, launch, and orbit. Go. And it does its countdown. <coughs> and while it's doing this, I suppose I can go through how this program is running. As we zoom out a bit, less noise. Ah, uh, successful launch. 
Everything is looking good. Okay, so <coughs> what we've whoop, whoop, what we've done is we've these are all the variables <coughs> I've got set. This is the orbit altitude variable, which I can change through this. Obviously, I can change all any of these through this, but yeah. And what's gotten down is we've done the countdown. This sets the throttle. We've had the print blast off, and now what it's doing is, well, this is for the staging. And then until in orbit, it clears the screen, because there are some issues I was having mostly with the uh, thing staging constantly. And it would cause trigger issues. And the way this is arranged, yep, those don't get in the way. Very good. Well, I hope it's not this one. Nope, batteries are still good. But we can see the ship apoapsis here already. Because that is constantly being printed. The angle of climb right there, which is currently 20, and will decrease down to about 10. And the ship heading, which is 90, I can change that too. Current ship apoapsis, which is the current ship apoapsis in space, and the current ship periapsis right there. And currently, we're not in space yet, so this isn't triggered. What it's doing is it's running through this bit of the code right here, which means that for every x increase in speed, it drops the angle down by 10 to the point where the angle, as long as the angle is above 10. So as long as the angle is above 10, it'll keep dropping down to 10. We're currently at 10, so it won't go any lower until we're in orbit. Which, this is the trigger for it going down below 10. And then here, right there, is the orbital burn. Or this is the orbital burn. What are the other? Uh, do, 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 set throttle to zero. Yeah, I wonder if it's actually going to get high enough. Yeah, it will get high enough for that. Yep, there it goes. Okay, good. Ooh, it's going to tap a little bit. Ooh. It's supposed to be setting higher, but it didn't. It's now dropping... Ooh, just barely inside the range we needed. Okay, so it is working as expected. I set it to 410, not 415. Yeah, I should have set it for 415. Oh well, it'll work. So that part is done. It is now waiting to trigger the orbital burn where the code block is right here. And what that'll do is when the ship is at the apoapsis minus 50, it'll set the throttle to 1. Once the periapsis is higher or equal to the orbit, minus 2,500 meters, it'll set throttle to zero and set orbit to one. Printing ship is an orbit at altitude of whatever, which is the ship altitude right there, which isn't the actual altitude because, well, it doesn't really work that way. And then it counts the number of program loops, as you can see that being renewed right here. And then after that, it just kind of ends. So yeah, we'll be back in a moment with my really crappy explanation of how my code works. And we'll be back. Okay, so we're back. And now we're almost at the required altitude, which will trigger the code block to orbit the spacecraft. Apoapsis minus 50 meters. Now, if this was any other spacecraft with um, remote tech on, we'd be screwed because there is no connection to the space, uh, space center. But... There we go. The program takes over and does what it needs to do to, to put it into orbit. Now the question is, is this going to work particularly well, or is it not going to work particularly well? because sometimes the engine doesn't shut off, which in this case it did.
which is good. We still have no connection to the space station, the space center. Ooh, the apoapsis is just a bit too high. And the periapsis is just a bit too low. But we're up. And we'll spend a majority of the time at the required altitude, provided my batteries actually do last long enough for me to do what I need to do. Uh, it might. It just might. I suppose we'll have to find out. Okay, and the nice thing is, it did last long enough. And the next nice thing is, we, I believe, are in the parameters to do the stage. Now, I don't actually want to waste all this fuel, so... Oh, can I just run the test? Ta-da! Oh, it wouldn't have mattered if I wasted all the fuel because it's... Well, we don't have battery. We don't have solar panels yet, so the batteries are going to die. Although we do have Kerbal Connect, so I can eventually come up here with something and just drain all the fuel out of these tanks and use it for something else. Because there's, um... Almost 200 fuel left up here. So huzzah! Using KOS as a script to make... to fit what you need for the tests by setting it up so you can easily change the parameters by having all the variables up at the top and easy to find and well named too if you see s angle deals with the angle of attack starting at 90 going down to 10 in the atmosphere and eventually different numbers in space s heading deals with the heading 90 degrees and so forth 90 degrees being east uh, 360 minus 90, I think 270 is west. The velocity setting for when it starts to pitch over for its gravity turn. The orbit is called a T-orbit, so I can change this number depending on what kind of orbit I need for a particular craft. And these deal with orbital burns, a count of the iterations, I count, and the velocity settings for additional angle comparison comparisons space settings when it prints off if in space or if it's in the orbit orbital burn and so on oh i forgot to have that round off to the whole number because woo lots of numbers after that get it down to a couple millionth or billionth of a <laughs> precision point but oh well see you next time and don't forget to like share and subscribe because there's going to be more of figuring out how KOS works and more Kerbal Space Program in the future. Thank you all for watching my video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to hit that stupid little bell thing that YouTube has added, because otherwise you won't get notifications of any new videos if you su subscribe. Also, follow me on Twitter, at GenGeft, as I always have my video updates on there, so you will never miss a video if you're on my Twitter feed, because they'll all be posted, and any other dumbass comment I make as well. So, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.